Recording in progress. That's what we want to hear. Wow, this room is filling up fast. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Who have we got on there? Hey, Joey. How are you going? Hey, Frank. All right. Okay. This. I think when I see these, what's this? These crazy numbers. All right. So, wow. The altcoin election cash grab. I am looking forward to uh, to this today. Well, I'm actually going to do some extra stuff as well. So, what, like you've correctly identified, it's really a time to lock in, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I want to do is show you guys how to lock in. Because the worst possible thing you can do is just spend all day sharing, staring at charts and researching things and doing your own research. You just like... Mm. up that way so i want to show you how i do it because i have a um i've been doing this a long time and i get better performance when i spend less time on it and that's a very very important thing to understand is that to your brain when you stare at it when you when you look at it again and again and again two things happen one is your brain can't tell the difference so every time you look at a chart it's going do i stay or do i go do i stay or do i go do i stay or do i go when it comes time to make that decision you've got decision fatigue you're already a retard and then you wonder why you're tired and grumpy and and, and stupid the second thing that happens is that every time you read something about a coin that's positive you go yeah that makes sense and then you read it again, and then it makes even more sense. You just you're just solidifying that opinion in your own mind, and then you're googling for things that support your opinion, and then you, and then you can't see any of the things that might go wrong with it because mm. shit does change, like shit can change. And then when and then when the bad news comes and you should be selling, you just go, oh, that's just fun. Don't worry about that. And this has happened to me. Like I personally got a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, but fucked with FTX because I was making so much money on FTX at the time. Like FTX got all of my pro trader friends because FTX was like the world's best counterparty. Like they just didn't know the first thing about trading. So they were doing all this dumb stuff that was like, that let us just extract free money from them. Like and and when the time came, it was like, I'm not stopping trading on FTX. Like, I made more money on FTX than all the others put together. And then they kept it all. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking Hotel California. So, I don't want you to repeat. Yeah. I don't want you to repeat my mistakes. And, uh, and, and mistakes, I've made a few. But I did it my way. All right. Let me share my screen here and let's get after it. Uh, present, present of you. Here we go. Sorry, it's a little bit it's a little bit weird doing this on my laptop. And if I do it on my big screen, it's uh um doesn't record right. Okay. We can see the screen. Welcome, everyone. The bull run we've all been waiting for, it started. It's definitely started. So welcome back, Diamond Hands. How's the fucking moon? But if you looked at the last two weeks where we're lower than we were two weeks ago, you probably need to speak nerd to understand why. There's a couple of things going on here. First of all, the move up off the lows was really a straight shot with very limited pullbacks. Our first pullback was here. Second pullback was, was only like three days. Really nice move up. And let's look at the move down. The move down is choppy. Objectively, it's choppy. The move down... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 days up. 22 days up, 14 days down. But the down days only took us, only took us about a third of the way back down to where the up days took us. So what it's telling us here 
is that the market is finding it easier to go up than go down. Now, look at the most recent price action. Overnight, the last 24 hours, we've tried to go down, failed, painted a bit of a hammer candle here. Well, a hammer candle. Now, the next thing that I want you to notice is that this is a classic form of a pullback. Corrective forms of pullback, we have two types of moves. We have impulsive moves, which are trending moves, and we have corrective moves. Um, the corrective moves tend to happen in down, up, down. So this is looking, looking like a duck, acting like a duck, quacking like a duck. The next thing I want you to notice is that the size of the candles is continuously getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So what that means is that as it's going down on average, it's we are still, what it means is that volatility is still very low. We know that once this picks up, statistically, it will probably go nuts. And let's just have a quick look at it in a longer term context. You can see that extremes of low volatility are nice places to get positioned. Extremes of low volatility are nice places to get positioned. Direction unknown. Extremes of low volatility are nice places to get positioned. Direction unknown. Extremes of low volatility, nice places to get positioned. Direction unknown. Extremes of low volatility, nice places to get positioned. Direction unknown. Extremes of low volatility, nice places to get positioned. Direction unknown. Extremes of low volatility here, boy, really nice place to get positioned. And now in the context, ex extremes of low volatility, nice place to get positioned. Extremes of low volatility, nice place to get positioned. Where are we now? Extremes of volatility, you can see this was a nice place to get positioned, direction unknown. This one, extreme of low volatility, was a really nice place to get positioned, direction unknown. Now we're at, we've been volatility down for ages. This is a really nice place to get positioned, direction unknown, but to me, signs point up. Now, if, if we know that we're either going to do this or Giga Nuke, well, for a start, our automated trend systems are going to make money no matter what happens. And we know that our automated trend systems tend to make most of their money in this phase, this phase, this phase, and this phase. That's something that we know. So let's look at the clues. The clues are, when we look at the altcoin market, it looks similar, superficially similar. But when we zoom in, it's quite a bit different under the surface. So in Bitcoin, this low, it went one, two, three. In altcoins, this is the total market cap of the altcoin market. We're painting a higher low. So what we're seeing is that objectively altcoins are stronger than Bitcoin. And we're seeing objectively messiness. 
Bitcoin down, altcoins down, but not as much. This is a classic technical signal that was first invented by Dow Jones, the Dow Jones guy, and it's called a Dow Jones non-confirmation. And it was originally used between the Dow utilities, the Dow transports, and the Dow Jones. But because we're not in fucking 1880, um, we now use it between altcoins and bitcoins. The next thing I want you to notice is that our volatility is rising on altcoins where we compare it to Bitcoin and it's falling on Bitcoin. So previously, and what everyone generally expects is Bitcoin to go first, then Ethereum or Solana, and then the major caps, and then and then the smaller caps, and then meme coins, and then and then really garbage coins, and then it's over. That's generally what people expect. We ain't seeing that. What I'd like you to show, what I'd like to show you in the first few minutes of today is I'd like to show you exactly what I do every day. And I want to show you exactly how I do it when I first wake up in the morning. I like to do it when I first wake up in the morning because that's the best time of my day. What I do is I personally spend, I, I, I put a timer on with my Apple Watch. I spend five minutes checking social media, scanning through my Twitter feed, messages on Slack, and then I do exactly this. There's a huge benefit from doing the same thing in the same order at the same time at each day. For a start, because you get quicker and you get better at it. The second, because if there's anything weird going on here, it, it shines out at you from space. You could spend three hours cycling back between charts, trying to figure it all out in your head. You just end up more confused than when you started. I don't want that for you. What I want for you to do is to have like a couple of minutes, bing, bang, boom, and then you switch that shit off. Don't have the apps on your phone, by the way. I don't have any trading. I don't have access to prices on my phone. Weird things happen when you stare at charts all day. Two things happen. Thing number one is your brain can't tell the difference but when you start analyzing a coin between just idly looking at a chart, oh, that's interesting, and making a decision, do I stay or do I go? So to your subconscious, you're making this continuous stream of do I stay or do I go? Do I stay or do I write? And then when it comes time to make a decision, you've got decision fatigue. And invariably what happens is you go, I don't like this, but I'll give it one more day. And then you give it one more day. And then you give it one more day. And then you're stuck and then you can't leave. That's fucked. The next thing that happens when you start spending endless time researching coins and pouring over charts is every time you look at something and you have an opinion, you're rewriting over that opinion and make it, it gets more solidity and more heft in your brain. And it feels more like absolute truth. And so this is what happens when people spend too much time researching their own coins. They think that XRP is the future of money and they and they interpret every single thing that happens through that lens. So you just get high on your own supply of bullshit and you can't even trust your own brain anymore. So don't do that. I want this to be over in five minutes. First thing we do, you're going to wake up every day. You're going to use trading view because it's the simplest shit. I like to have one indicator, which is ATR percentage. Um, just You don't need this. You can do it perfectly adequately without it. But what I want to see when volatility is going down is I pay very close attention when we see an uptick in volatility from a low base. This is usually a signal when volatility is low, I want to be paying very close attention. Why? Because nobody else is. When volatility is high, I'm thinking about taking a break from the markets. When volatility is high, I'm thinking I probably don't have much of an edge here. Does that make sense so far in the chat? Yeah, that's sounding great. You might want to restart your camera, Scott. You're frozen. Maybe. Yeah, it happens when I do some sort of gesture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right. All right. And you can just jump in and tell me if that happens. So the first thing that we're looking at is Bitcoin. Now, everyone looks, did Bitcoin go up or did it go down? I want you to just get a bit away from that. Let's look at how Bitcoin went up or down. Now, the factors that we have in reading price action are what was the range Was it bigger or smaller than yesterday? So, for example, big range, medium range, smaller range, small S range. Pretty obvious this is the little engine that's running out of puff, right? The next thing that you can look at How much overlap with the previous bar? Here we have a lot of overlap with the previous bar. And in context, context, it went down. And then we have a lot of overlap up. And we closed higher than it was. So this is telling us a story that the people who thought it was going to go down, they got completely fucked. And the people who were right didn't sell out too much and bank too many profits. How much overlap did we have with the previous bar? Quite a lot. So this is telling us that the move is running out of steam. We've got 100% overlap here. This is an inside bar. So this is telling us that this room is this move is nearly over. You probably want to be thinking, of, if you're a short-term trader after you see this, you probably want to be thinking about banking profits. And then we get an inside day again, a double inside day, quite a rare pattern. And you want to be thinking about reversing when you see signs of weakness. Now here, what do we see? We've seen the market has painted a strong move up, fast move down, a very choppy move up, and it's tried to go up and gone down. Now, um, Maurizio actually called a short-term top here. It, generally, a principle of reading charts is that if you whatever you think is going to happen probably takes an extra few days to a week to a few weeks than what it looks like it's going to happen. Now, what's happened over the last week? Over the last week, tried to go up and failed. Tried to go up and failed. The market rarely tries. The market rarely tries tries it three days in a row. Usually, it's going to try the other thing. Gave a half ass try went down. Now what's happened, it started here, tried to go up and failed, gone all the way down, but buyers have stepped in. So what we have here is not a slam dunk, definitely bull run starting, but what we have is evidence that the sellers are banking profits, that the buyers are stepping in. We would increase that evidence if we see that here. So if you're doing your daily update, what I would do then, draw a little line here and then right click and go add alert. Price crossing trend line once per bar and you can do the notifications. You can send an email. You can make it Bing. You can, uh, um, you can also send an SMS. Right? So you don't have to watch this stuff. So the first thing you watch is Bitcoin. Now, the second thing you want to watch is stocks. Specifically, I like to watch the ES, which is ES1 exclamation mark, which is the S&P 500 first. You can see inside bar, big range, medium range, small range, tried to go down, didn't. It's still nominally bullish but it's running out of puff. Now let's look at the tech index, which is NQ1, question mark. Slightly weaker, but the same basic thing. So there's nothing really bearish on the horizon for tech stocks or the S&P 500 because we know those things are going to drag us down. And 
Has everyone got this so far in the chat? Oh, um, to add an indicator to trading view, you go up to indicators and you search for average true range percent. You can use average true range. Most people do. I like percent because crypto moves so much that it's it's more meaningful as a percent. But average true range is perfectly fine if you don't have it on whatever trading platform you have. Okay. Everyone cool so far? Okay, the next thing you want to do before you do any complicated bullshit is open your, you want to have this button here at the top right, opens up trading lists, watch lists. You can have a bunch of different watch lists. You can have a new list. You can create new list. You can add to coins in your list by going add symbol. I want to have a list of the positions that I hold front and center, and I want to check that before I check anything else because the most important shit is the shit you own, and that's an important principle. Now, what I do at this stage is make notes. I'm going to, I use good, I use Apple Notes for that. You could use a pen and paper. You can use whatever. And, and I want to make notes if there's anything I want to circle back on because there's a thousand coins. You can just get trapped in a loop here. So I'm going to search. Usually, before I do this, I search for I search for change. Now, at a glance, what is this telling me? Popcat, I own big. Retardio, I own big. Peppy, Ina, uh, Wu, I don't own much anymore. So. Overall, that tells me that the things that I'm holding are mostly doing really good. And let's go through them in order. Pop cat. This is my stop loss on my pop cat leverage position, by the way. Um, looks good. Three days down. The last day down was a lot of overlap. And now we've seen a strong bull move. And it, and where did it close? It closed at the highs. This is important, closing at the highs with none of this kind of selling pressure at the highs, uh, with uh, none of this kind of selling pressure at the highs, tells us that people are expecting further gains. I'm cool with that. The next one, uh, let's look at Retardio properly. This is the real chart. Okay, this is in sold terms, and sold's probably gone up. Um, in fact, let's add sold so we can see it. Okay, so this is Retardio. We've been holding it since way back in the day. Looking good. Pepe. So this is interesting. Bitcoin got down below here. Pepe didn't get didn't get down to its previous lows, and it painted a bullish candle. This is very cautiously bullish and looking good. ENA is a coin that I'm a bag holder on, and it's not looked so good, but you can see that in the last little bit here, we've got lots of overlap, and now we're painting an up day while Bitcoin went down. Slightly bullish. Woo, I barely hold, so I don't care, um, but Woo has been underperforming, so that's why I'm, I'm lightened up on it. Mog, I hold... Nice hammer candle today. Um, the rest of these, the only one I hold is Pendle. Hasn't broken the recent lows. Reasonably okay. Now, the next thing I want to check is the squiggle charts. So I have all these in the one layer, and I go back to two layouts, and then I'll click on this one and then click in the bottom right-hand corner to load it up. Now, you see how these coins are all wiggling around? What I want to go back to is put a vertical line by using vertical line here into the last major low. And I want to smooth back until I see the last major low. And I want to go, the things that I want to know are, what are the top coins? And what am I holding? I'm holding Popcat. I'm holding Tau in a big way. 
I'm holding Sui in a big way. I'm holding Mog in a small way. Um, I'm holding Pendle and I'm holding ENA. So I've got some really out performers and I've got some medium performers that are showing promise. This is in my discretionary portfolio, not my fully automated trading. My fully automated trading takes care of this. Now, the last thing that I want to check is my barbell portfolio. So my barbell portfolio is I throw a very, very small amount of money into meme coins. I bought retard Retardio is 100x for me from now. And Retardio, I have a couple hundred grand in now. I put two grand in, it's 200 something now. Um, more. What is the market cap? This is what you want to check with memes. You want to check market cap, liquidity, and you want to check the top holders. Are they selling? So I want to go through some of the top holders just randomly and go, no, no, they're buyers, they're not sellers. So that's what I want to see. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to go through my meme court portfolio. What I want to see is when the market cap gets too high, it has to be listed on exchanges to justify that high price. So when it gets above about 500 million, I need to see it listed on exchanges so that it really, if it's worth, if it's listed on exchanges, it has liquidity, then it's worth a higher price. If it's not, like for example, um, SPX, I would be very wary of this at 551 market cap. It might work, it might not, but that you don't have to have a dog in every fight. So let's go through our portfolio here. Mitch, looking pretty good for today. Starting to pump, held solid. Um, this is going to be one that influences pump. Um, it's a tiny, tiny market, 100K market cap coin. You know, we're looking at pumping this to, to 5 million. You know, we're not looking at turning this into a major coin. We're looking at we're looking at this like a Tinder date at a time, uh, at a time of, of uh, our choosing. Next one, nigger butt. Look at this. Got in here. Where are we? Close, pretty close to all time highs mildly mildly extremely racist coin this is something the incels all like the influencers all like i've got no idea why at 7.8 million dollar market cap is that overloaded i think this could get to 50 or 100 i'll be scaling out at 50 um looking pretty good the next one sigma this is one we've been bullish on for a very long time Fucking how low, how you like me now? We got in here. You know, we're a 30x on this so far. A little bit more is time to start taking profits here. Um, this one is an absolutely cracked cult coin. You want to be back. So what do you do when you catch a runner? When you, you, you've got a 30x or a 50x, you don't want to round trip it, but everything that you get a 30X on, you're going to have to hold through a 70% drop at some point. So what you want to do is you want to sell an amount. Now, there's no scientific, there's no proper quanting, there's no smart way that got you here in the first place. So you can't use your big brain to get you out of here. So here's what you do. You sell an amount that makes you hate yourself if it 10x is from here, you want to absolutely hate that you sold. And if it goes back down to zero, you want to absolutely hate yourself for only selling that little amount. So the so the balance is you want to just like 
clock off from the computer, go for a walk, touch grass, and say, what is the point where I actually hate myself? That's how you do it. Retardio, my largest position. This one gets better and better, guys. This is going to be a multi-billion dollar coin. Multi-billion dollar coin. It's it, all the big influences are behind it. Um, the top holders, none of them sold. Um, they just launched a casino. It's getting major publicity. People are doing graffiti for it on the real world. They're having raves about Retardio raves in Poland. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we want to look at, let me show you, what do we want with the meme coin? We want more holders to come in because they're going to buy our bags. Retardio, steady climb. Sigma, steady climb. Nigabut, steady climb. Mitch, steady climb. Fat GF. Steady climb. Tramp, this one's a little bit dodgy, to be honest. Might flick out Tramp for Trump. Popcat, beauty. Turbo, little flat spot. SPX, steady climb. It's probably got more to go. That's how you do it. And Tramp, how are we doing? I mean, it still looks okay. I, in my opinion, a month before the election, Trump coins, you probably got to hold them and just fuck it, we bought. Yeah, I've shown you the spaghetti charts. The last thing you want to do, you're going to go back to this one. Zoom out. And you can zoom out easily by changing this to a line. And has anything here changed your, changed your opinion? This is just normal choppiness around all-time highs to shake the tourists out. A lot of people bought here. So you, so the last thing you want to do is a sanity check. You know, for example, if we got below here, everything would change in my opinion. I would say if we look bullish and we don't go bullish, well, fuck, i got to change my opinion. Like the facts change, you you got to change. I change my mind. What do you do? Um, so that's the last thing we do is a little sanity check. And I want you to get away from thinking like, this thing will happen because of that thing. The halving is happens, so it's going to do that. It's a four-year cycle, so it has to do that. That's all fucking nonsense, man. That's like nonsense. It's all just percentages. So did we see anything in the last week in the chat that makes us adjust our percentages... Um, the Mitch contract address for, for the person who asked. The way to get it from Dex Screener, don't Google it because you'll get some scam bullshit. Go to where it says Mitch, copy, and then I'll paste it in the chat, Mitch. Dex Screener is the place for this. Okay, so are we the same amount of bullishness? Are we more? Are we less? What do you guys think? Marlon says might increase percentage of bullishness. What does everyone else think? Waiting game at the moment. Nick G. Jones, meme super cycle. I think it is a meme super cycle. Like a lot of the top coins here are, are, are memes. And and uh, I think Nick's right. Jim Jager says get out. Okay, you can get out. Takes two to make a market. If tourists weren't getting out of the market, it it cannot moon. Okay, anyone else got opinions? All opinions are valid. It's definitely looking choppy. 
I don't think it looks bearish. I think it's I think just because I think it's a simplistic view that I'd like you to get away from that the market went down, therefore it's bearish. I think that's a toddler's view of the market. Oh, it went up, it's good. Oh, it went down, it's bad. I want you to get away from that. I want you to get towards how did it go up? How did it go bad? Mike Ladonsky, if we have a black swan event, memes may get killed. May memes are gonna get absolutely slaughtered if we have a bear market we have a if if we have a uh, um yeah if we have a recession this is not risk free all right topping up on dips so this so you should do this this should take you about 5 minutes we call the bottom here by the way and so far, that bottom has held. If that bottom doesn't hold, I will change my opinion. And, you know, why? Because previous times, once we clear once we clear up, things change. We've seen it play out before in 2017 and 2020. Once the all-time highs get hit, the tourists are going to come back. But you want to be there before the tourists arrive. You want to be there before the normies. You want to have... The easy money is the first money. And we see this time and time again. While everyone else thinks crypto's dead, they're distracted by the war in Iran. By the way, war is bullish. Uh, Rothschild said you buy to the sound of cannons and sell to the sound of trumpets. And he made his, uh, Lord Rothschild made his biggest ever win on the, the Battle of Waterloo. True story. You buy you buy when wars are on. Now, altcoins are in a secret bull market. How do we know? Well, because the dark blue line here is Bitcoin. And since the lows, you can see that almost everything's beating Bitcoin except for a couple of really crappy coins. Well, I wouldn't call ontology a crappy coin. Oh, um, but... But yeah, but most things are beating Bitcoin. This is not the usual way that things happen. Usually it's Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then Solana, then some new hot coins. Last time it was Ondo. And then some meme coins. And then some really bad quality shit coins. And then it's all over. All coins are in a secret bull market that you probably don't even know about. I'm very bullish on all coins. The winning coins aren't the ones you are trading now. The winning coins of the last cycle were Rune and Ondo and shit like that. The new bull, new bull phase, new year, new you, the new coins with shiny new stories, they're easier for people to latch onto because they haven't got the baggage, they haven't got the bag holders. A new it's like when you when you go to the movies, are you looking for this? Are you looking to see the summer blockbuster or are you looking to see the classic film? When you walk into the bookshop. Are you looking for the new releases or are you looking to buy Dostoevsky? Are you looking, when you walk into Foot Locker, are you going straight for what's the brand new kicks or are you buying some classics? You know, it's much easier for human nature to latch onto a new story. So today I'm going to spoon feed you the five coins I'm most bullish on and holding in my personal discretionary wallet. Most of my trading is fully automated. You guys know that. So most of my trading, I don't even give I, I you couldn't possibly have a trader who gives less fucks day to day about the vast majority of my wealth and whether it goes up or down. Like, you know, my my trading accounts swing around regularly by a million bucks a month and I barely even check them. But first, let's explore why I've called the bo bottom on crypto and why I've taken the biggest bet of my trading career. So October has really good monthly seasonality. And seasonality is extremely strong in crypto. Not only month to month, not only day to day. Hour to hour. For example, there's very strong mean reversion effects from 0000 to 0 to 04 o'clock GMT. The next four hours we have just restart your camera when you get a chance. Sorry. Um, 
the next four hours we have uh, a very strong negative seasonality. And I'll show you what that looks like. Of course, where are we? In, oh, the next four hours from now. Next, The next four hours from... Twenty minutes time. Um, it's just a fact. On average, the markets go down during that time. On average, now liquidity is the most important factor in crypto returns. And currently, what we're seeing this is our book depth. So this is this is how many people are willing to buy and sell at what price. And what we've seen consistently is that we've got buy liquidity increasing. What that means is that when we've got dip buyers, they're very ready to step in. We've also seen a very slight decrease in sell liquidity. Sellers aren't willing to sell at crappy prices anymore. It's a hidden sign. Now, options trading on Bitcoin ETFs has just been approved on the IBIT uh, uh, ETF. What that's going to do is change the market in ways that are very, very hard to completely understand and predict right now. But it sets the stage for GameStop style squeezes because we're going to get billions of dollars worth of Jane Street trading into this, just the same as with the Indian options markets. It's going to cause things to wobble around and become a bit unstable. And we can see GameStop type squeezes because that's how the GameStop happened. The interest rate cutting cycle has started. And every time we've seen this, every bull, you, you might think every bull market started with the halving, and it has, but every bull market in crypto has also started with an interest rate cycle cutting cycle. And you can see ours has just started. The obvious elephant in the room is that the election is a month away. It's too close to call. I don't get involved in US politics. Personally, I don't like Trump as a human being, but I think Kamala is one of the worst candidates ever proposed. She just looks like a bland copy paste of Hillary with a different color. Um, I don't know who's gonna win. Trump is unashamedly pro crypto, unashamedly super grifty on crypto. If Trump wins, we pump, guaranteed. But Kamala, She's pivoting to pro crypto as well. So what this means, and the information hasn't quite disseminated yet, in my opinion, is that we win no matter what. And that's why I think this is going to be the biggest bull market of all time, but also the longest running crypto bull market of all time, particularly the options on iBit. I think that's an underrated factor. You're still really, really early. I think we've got an old season. I think the reason I've still got significant funds in discretionary alts is I think there's a decent shot. All of these bullshit coins I'm holding are going to 10 to 50x in the next six months. Decent shot. If you aren't positioned right now, you haven't got a moment to waste. And the last six months, it's been near impossible to make any money from crypto. I haven't made any money from crypto in the last six months. I doubt anyone has. But this changes in the blink of an eye. And now is the time. But the real problem isn't making the money. It's not fumbling the bag when it all ends. And let's be honest, because as great as these times are, there's a real opportunity times, guys. Like you can you can change your life. And I've changed my life in these like one every few year chances that you get. They always end. And the game isn't how much you make, it's how much you keep. And I'm going to show you the exact strategies I'm using to turn five grand into $1 million in 2024. I'm halfway there and I reckon I'm going to get to a million bucks in 2024. Like I said, I started with five grand. You all saw it. I'm at half a million bucks. Even after spending six months of getting butt fucked, I reckon I'm going to get to a million bucks in 2024. And you can call me a liar. If I don't, I'll show you all my wallets. So if you've missed out on making generational wealth in crypto, or if you got carted out in a stretcher in the last six months of really, really difficult conditions, this is an important thing to understand, by the way. I call it the easy time, hard time principle. Markets cycle from a time when, market, when money is easy to make 
to a time when it's really fucking hard. If you'll notice that these lengths of times, these are roughly about the same now. We're ready for easy time again. Inshallah. This is your second chance because I'm going to show you in advance which coins are going to move and it's going to be your ticket to building massive wealth. And this isn't the day trading or swing trading I usually do. Like I'm trading all day. This is spending 20 minutes building a portfolio and not touching it. Keeping your hands off the steering wheel. When do you sell? You sell when your normie buddies start talking at work about, have you heard about this coin called XRP? I got a coin tip for you. When you're standing in the line at the coffee shop and you see the hipsters checking crypto prices over the shoulder on the phones, that's the time when you start scaling out. You don't want to touch it until you start seeing crypto prices on the on the, on the six o'clock gears. You can do this with just a few hundred bucks. So who am I? I'm a gorilla taking human form, but I assure you I am as nerdy as nerds get. I am a nerd on the inside. I've gathered, gathered some of the world's best quantitative traders, including the guy I love with my whole heart, who I think is um, my favorite quants at my company, Real Trading Research. And we make incredibly profitable trades with eight-figure accounts. Um, we're running a bit over 12 million bucks right now. So here's my big promise for you. At the end of this presentation, you're going to know how to set your positions for this bull run, how to cash out at the perfect time, how to compound your winnings into generational wealth like I have already. And I'll prove that to you. But before we get started on my five coin set and forget portfolio, I want to share my latest update on the meme coin market because it's where the action is right now. Now, memes are back, but not how they were. The, it was that you bought these little 10K market cap coins on pump.fun and, and, and in and out and zig and zag all day. We had a pile of fun doing that, paid a pile of money. But there's so many new ones that you've got to take the small fish, not the pad tadpoles now. And what we're looking at now, what I suggest you look at is concentrate on memes in the 20 to 50 in the 20 to $50 million range before they go hard. And you want to scale out when they get to the half a million dollar, uh, the half a billion dollar range. Now the metas are different. Before the metas were things like a hundred variants of cat dogs, cat coins, dog coins, frog coins. I think the only ones, I think we've already seen the best dog coin is whiff. The best pat, cat coins are pop cat and mog. The best frog coins are fwog, F-W-O-G, and Pepe. I don't think we're going to see a new derivative of those achieve the same level of success. I think that's a sucker play. I really doubt lightning is going to strike twice there. What I see as being the new meta is these counterculture, edgy, alt-righty, incest-adjacent a little bit racist, we don't give a fuck what you think kind of coins. And also there's some meme coins on SUI and also TRX that I think are worth a look. What you want is an army of obsessed schizos working 24-7 for your bags. And the ones I like most are obviously Retardio and Sigma, which are both 100Xs for us so far. I think they got plenty to go. I think Sigma, and you're looking for cult coins. You're looking for coins that are a cult. A cult. That's what you're looking for. And you're looking for edgy kind of cool kids coins that people can build an identity around. In the same way that people built their identity around their edgy NFT communities of um, Miladies, Remorias, Remoras, Remilios, um, et cetera. So these coins I'm about to show you, these aren't randomly based, chosen on vibes. These are the strongest momentum coins off the lows with strong fundamentals and a compelling story. Show you the data in a few minutes, but let's just get to the coins. Popcats, fucking coin that pops, easy to understand. Is it doing well? Yeah, it is. Look at it. It's outperforming every fucking thing. No, oh, look at 
let's look at it on a longer on a longer scale. So where's our last low? There. Popcat, strongest coin. The strongest coin. Nothing gives, nothing brings success like success. People are noticing Popcat. Why? Because it's outperforming everything else. It's as simple as that. You want to hold the winners. Solid pick. And it's really easy to understand. It's the best cat meme that isn't stupidly valued already. I think it's a better meme than Flocky. I think it's a better meme than Bonk. I think it's newer and arguably better than Dog With Hat. And Dog With Hat is $2 billion. And it got to, I think it was at $10 billion at one stage. I think Popcat can do that. I think it can 10x from here. If we get a real bull market, maybe a bit more. And memes aren't going anywhere. That's what the that's what the evidence is telling us right now is that memes aren't done. The valuable memes are the memes that are on multiple exchanges because you can get out of them. And Popcat weirdly has a Binance perpetual futures listing, but it does but not a spot listing, and it doesn't have a Coinbase listing yet. It's on Bybit, it's on HTX, it's on Gate. It's almost there, but not, but not quite yet. It's on Hyper Liquid. If you're a US customer, this is the place to trade it on leverage. When it adds these spot markets, it should immediately double the value. The second one, ENA is a synthetic stable coin called USDE, which is capturing market share off USD Tether. It's backed by the biggest firms in the industry, Binance, Bybit, OKX, Terabit, Fidelity, Wintermute, the biggest market maker. These guys are all behind it and they're looking to eat Tether's lunch. And the big difference is it pays yield and Tether doesn't. The, the, they made poor choices with the tokenomics. The tokenomics on it sucked. I bought it at a buck and I got, I, I'm down bad on this coin. But at 30 cents, I think this is a lock to get back to a buck fifty inside six months. I think this is a really, really, really great, great play. And how do we know it? Because where is it? You could see early signs of outperformance, and it's doing pretty well. It's beaten most things. It's the dark blue line, by the way. I think this is a really good coin. The best DeFi AI coin that is actually not some bullshit chat GPT wrapper really is the bleeding edge of DeFi AI innovation. Um, Tau, second strongest coin after Popcat. you got to hold this one, guys. I'm holding this in size. I think it's a 50X from here. Sui, I was bearish on this coin. I thought it was a scam. Because it's a VC coin. Proved me wrong. A couple of weeks ago, I've had to buy into it. I fucking what can what can you do? I got the, I missed this one early, and it was showing all the signs. But I'm into it, and it's the third strongest coin. Kendall is the best idea in DeFi. The problem with staking your coins right now is the yield goes up and down. So what happens is you, is you stake this coin that looks like it's got 100% APR, and then when thousands of people jump into it, the yield goes back to 12% APR, which sucks, obviously, so you have to keep watching it. Pendle lets you lock it in, and it lets you lock in your USD.E, which we know is the standout DeFi stablecoin, and if you look at the percentages, most nearly half their business is USD.E, this is a very useful protocol. I use it myself for staking. It's at $900 million market cap. This should be a $50 billion coin in a bull market. Now, why did I choose these coins for my discretionary portfolio? Well, I don't want to hold 10 memes. 
I don't want to hold 10 stable coins. I don't want to hold 10 DeFi coins. I don't want to hold 10 AI coins. I want to hold a mix because that's how you do discretionary trading. You hold a mix. And this is a nice, even spread of bets. If we get an altcoin bull run, these will outperform my own automated systems. It's why I've got, a, it's why as well as my automated systems that have most of my money, I've got a few bets in these and I've got a few bets in some long shot meme coins. But when this kicks off, you're making piles of cash, you're thinking it's going to go retarded. You won't want to sell. It's a real problem. Um, I didn't sell any of my discretionary bags in May, in May when, when they topped, March when they topped. It's a real problem. It's bitten me on the ass more than once. The hard part is knowing when to sell and how much to sell. Otherwise, you can get caught holding the bag and losing everything. What I'm about to show you is an autopilot way to know exactly when to sell. Since the system automatically keeps you in profit, you can enjoy your wealth without having to constantly check your phone, which is retarded. Don't do it to see what... Don't check your phone. Don't even have prices on your phone. Delete all the apps, please. For the love of all that's holy, your performance will be out of sight, improved, and you'll enjoy your life and your wife won't get pissed at you, and you'll actually and you'll actually be present for your life instead of checking this stupid bullshit. But you'll always be liquid. You'll never be like down 90%, I can't cash out till I get my money back. You can cash out exactly when you're ready to buy that new car, buy that dream house. I cashed out a couple of million bucks to buy my dream house, building my dream house right now. It's so fucking cool, guys. You should see this house that I'm building. It's only small. It's like a house. To, it's a cabin. It's not a house, but it's exactly what I want. It's like cabin porn on the water in Thailand, made out of 100-year-old antique teak wood with a $200,000 kitchen and like all the shit that I've always wanted, but just super small. Like I only want a small house. I'm, uh, well, I'm, I'm not a like show-off guy and I want it to be right on the beach, like step out of my front door onto the beach. That's what I wanted and that's what I got. I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step blueprint to actually build your net worth to more than a million dollars. Now, I know that might sound crazy, but just keep an open mind. Stick with me and entertain the idea that this could be possible for you because I'm going to show you how and I want you to know this. The beating heart of crypto. The beating heart of crypto always has been and always will be the chance for a little guy to throw a few thousand dollars in a in an unknown coin that no one's ever heard of and end up with generational wealth. Like I threw $3,000 in Retardio. I think I'll be able to cash that out with 10 million bucks. When that happens... When you start to hear about those stories, like we heard about with Dog With Hat and Popcat right now, crypto bull markets spread. Everyone hears about it. Here's the plan. You want to ride this alt season to a life-changing win. You want to take the profits. You want to get about 10xing that on autopilot without ever risking what you already have. And when I say 10x returns on autopilot, you might think that's just bullshit. But since 2019, what I'm going to show you has turned a $10,000 starting investment into $203,000. That's a 20x return at sharp 1.81 for those who's, who are fluent in nerd. Today, you're going to see a press button make money system that makes money every single year since we started in 2019. It's never had a losing year. It has 4.5 million of our own money, making 100% per year. It earns risk-adjusted returns better than George Soros, Ray Dalio put together. And that is not... An exaggeration. Works in bull markets and it works in bear markets. Never had a losing year. Printed money during the SBF, FTX debacle, every other crypto disaster requires no thinking, no luck, no predictions. You don't even need to check it. It works better if you don't. Requires zero knowledge of crypto. You don't need to be a nerd. You don't even need to know what a blockchain is. And it runs on autopilot and it works better if you're a lazy fat fuck like me. Takes three minutes to set up. If you can set up Netflix, you can set up this. Requires zero technical skill. It takes the risk out of crypto because it makes money like clockwork in bear markets. 
four of the biggest, four of the ten biggest hedge funds do almost exactly this. Just works better in crypto. It's created countless billionaires and multimillionaires. I've personally made just under ten million US dollars from it so far. Excuse me while I get a little bit nerdy and dirty for a few minutes. I want to show you under the hood. I want this as a nothing held back presentation. I want to show you the most powerful trading system ever offered to retail traders. I'm going to tell you the story of how I built it. I fucking ripped off the cunts who are already making billions and billions of dollars. And then I improved it from there by when we made enough money to employ some of the smartest people in the world. That's what we did. We just reverse engineered the, the biggest and best and best performing Momentum Quant Fund in the world, which is MAN AHL. And then I hired some of the best quants in the world to improve it. So in the last few years, algo trading has really matured. So we have high frequency, high frequency trading, high frequency trading firms like Hudson River Jump Trading, market makers like XTX, Jane Street, Optiva, the stat art firms like Citadel, Bell Asney, and, and Rentec, and the trend following firms like MAN AHL or TransTrend. Everyone does exactly the same thing. They just do it at different time frames. And a lot of the problems that were up in the air about even 10 years ago, a lot of the problems that were like, how do we, there was a, there was a difference of opinion. They're solved problems now. So in exactly the same way as say Uber was only able to get built because the problem of Google Maps was a solved problem. We're able to run shortcut straight to the finish line of algo trading because all these other firms have solved all the major problems with quant trading. What do we do? We make a forecast of future prices. Everyone makes a forecast of future prices. Those for how do you make a forecast of future prices? You don't do a sim a complicated if statement like a lot of amateur traders do, which is say if the VIX is below 30 and it's above the 200 moving average and it's been down five days in a row and it's got an up close, then you do that. That's bullshit. That doesn't work. What you do is you make many different single parameter forecasts, like these are all these little dots are all of ours, and you turn them into one number to rule them all. If the forecast is positive, you bet the market goes up. If the forecast is negative, you bet that the market goes down. That's how you do it. Now, firms blend many different forecasts, and the more the better. We use 36 on our trend following algos. We use 36 on our, our on our new um, momentum algos, and we use three different ones on our carry algos. But you know, a firm with the smartest people in the world, like Rentec, who are the greatest ever to do it, they have over a thousand. You get a performance boost from diversification in both signals and the number of instruments you trade. So you get a boost from holding five stocks instead of one stock, right? So for us, we get a boost from trading all of these coins instead of a single coin, and we get a boost from trading 36 different trend-following algos instead of one. You're not going to find the world's greatest super system that works the best all the time ever. You might find the super system that works best in the past, but it's damn sure not going to be the one that works best in the future. And this is the classic mistake that we don't make. Now, your forecast can be simple and robust. And we use the industry standard ones. I didn't reinvent the wheel. Our industry standard trend momentum and carry ones, or you can use complicated and tricky ones based on alternative data. The classic one is people have satellites trained on Walmart car parts and, and they run a signal just like this on how many cars are in Walmart car parks, less cars, less customers. They get that ahead of, of everyone else. It's called a nowcast. So you can either do that. You could do it on Twitter sentiment, mean reversion on a relative value basket, on-chain analysis. You can do it on the options market volatility surf surface. But the key point that I want to make, it all works the same. You're all just making a forecast. So we've built an engine that can take any forecast very, very simply. The next key point I want to make, your performance scales with the square root of the number of independent bets. 
So if you aren't fluent in NERD, let me translate. If you trade more markets with simple forecasts, this is much better than trying to get the world's greatest e-mini system or the world's greatest gold system. Because it's, e and even if your forecasts aren't great, even if I was a crappy quant, and I'm not, but even if I was shit at my job, I could overcome the fact that I would be shit just simply by trading more markets. And the boost from trading more markets, the secret source of all quant trading, is that's better than having better forecasts. So don't worry if you're a little bit confused. Don't worry at all. Um, oh, sorry. Questions so far on this? So far, pretty good, mate. I'll be handling a few of the basic tech questions about exchanges. Um, okay, well, um, let me, yeah. let me just... Yeah. Okay, let me... Sorry, dude, you've completely frozen and we're not seeing the share screen. Okay, let me share my screen again. All right, this is how it works. You load up Finrev, you've got a dashboard. This connects to your Binance, your Bybit, your uh, your distributed exchange like DYDX version 4, your KuCoin, your, your BitGet account. Um, this was where he pulled his money out briefly. Um, so, th so this is a, a, a friend of mine. I'm only showing his account because he's been running it for a long time. He was probably our, one of the first paying customers. Um, this is the total amount that he's put in less than the amount that he's pulled out. He's pulled out quite a lot. So he's pulled out profits. This is his current market value at a glance. And this is the profit that he's made. This is his equity curve. And you can print that, you can download it, you can download it as CSV um, or, a, or a spreadsheet. But the first thing that you want to see is, am I long or am I short today? And we can see that his positions, he's... dominated by, sh by short positions, but one large position. Now let's look in detail at his positions. Sorry. So his positions are down here. We can sort by position size and look at his biggest positions. We can see at a glance that if we look at his positions by size, he's he's got like two longs in the top five and then mostly short a couple of longs. And, you know, the second, there's lots and lots of positions, but most of them are pretty small. The big ones are like this. So we can... We can dig in a little bit here. Let's go to Jasmine, which is his biggest position. Now let's look at now let's look at what it's done. So for example, in here we can zoom in. The down arrows are sells, the up arrows are buys. Now every day we don't tend to go all in or all out of positions. That's amateur stuff. Why? Because if you're going all in and all out, you're paying a lot of trading fees, you're crossing the spread, the trading costs eat your shit up. So the more we zoom in, we, the more we see our forecast, we got long here, we stayed long, you get any sort of bull run. And then we started selling our position here, selling our position here, selling our position here, selling our position here. It started to go up, so we bought a little bit more and we bought a little bit more because volatility went down and then we sold out and now we're out of the position. We can see our orders. So we tried to buy 
19,503 one, one cent jazz mirrors. We tried to sell, sorry, those. We got the fill price. We got a little bit of slippage. And we can see our fills as well. So you can get whatever level of granularity that you want. We can see all of our individual forecasts here. We can zoom in. We can zoom out. We can see what it's got today. And we can go to a trade history. Okay. What did it do yesterday? Yesterday, we sold a couple of hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin. The Zoom, for some reason, hates the screen and it's going to keep reloading. But really, we're just playing around the edges. We're doing it'll probably be said as I scroll down. Zoom doesn't like it for some reason. But you can see basically we were selling out of some longs. Yeah, for some reason Zoom hates that. It doesn't do that when you're not in Zoom. Um must be some JavaScript thing that I've got set up wrong. Okay. Um, if you need support, we've got a knowledge base. We've got a live chat. We've got people. We've got people managing this twenty four hours a day. So there's never a situation you can't get live chat. Now, we cannot, absolutely impossible for anyone working in our company to transfer your money to a different sub account or withdraw your money from your account. We have permission to trade. We don't have permission to move your funds. Your funds never go into our custody. We never take your money. We don't want your money. I want your money to stay with you and you should never hand over your keys to someone else. Not your keys, not your coins. Your account, keep your money. Never believe anyone who says, oh, just loan me the money and I'll pay you back and give you an IOU. Fuck that. Don't do that. Don't do that. So how well does it work? I mean, these are our real costs after, uh, these are our real results after costs. Trend has long periods of sideways. Trend needs markets to move and they haven't moved in six months. I want to be perfectly honest about that. This does on average 100% a year. It's made money every year, but you are going to have periods where it's frustrating. You've got a solution there. These are some longer term results um, without the log scale. The log scale makes everything look a bit better than it is. You'll note that it's been profitable every year since 2019. Our Sharpe ratio is 1.81 and our, uh, our uh, compounded annual growth rate is 107%. And we're going to achieve that again this year too, um, every year. But I want to be honest with you, it spends a lot of time going sideways and then makes its money in short spurts. You don't. A good way to fuck yourself is to think, that, oh, I'm going to put it in and pull it out. I'm going to zig and I'm going to zag. I can't pick that. I know that that's a bad idea. Don't do that, please. You, it's got better returns and better risk-adjusted returns than buy and hold Bitcoin. Now, let me unveil the massive improvements in FINREV 3.0, which is really cool. And we got a deal for you today to smooth the ride, make it easier to live with. We've added two new edges, which we think will take us to the end game. And we've got an $8 billion fund manager who's just about to ink a deal for us to build a, uh, to build a fund for them. They like it so much. So our goal is always to get to a sharp 2.0 system. This would make it the best risk-adjusted return ever offered to retail investors ever. The greatest ever to do it is Rentec, and their return before fees was 2.1 sharp, admittedly over 30 years, and after fees was 1.9 sharp. So we're going, we've got this outrageous goal to be the best ever to fucking do it and, and not to give the money to billionaires, to give the money to little guys. This is our goal. Outrageous goal. Like, who am I to do that? We think we can do it. So how do we do it? We take our existing trend signals, these ones. We take our existing trend signals. We convert them into what we call a market neutral signal. So right now, we're... 70% short and 20% long. And we can be 100% long. We can be 100% short. When we convert those into a market neutral signal, where we stay 50% long and 50% short all the time. So we're taking the top half of our signals and we're going long, taking the bottom half and now going short. 
This is what our existing trend signals look like. Lumpy and bumpy. Pretty good. When we turn it into a market neutral signal, see how much more friendly it gets? Much higher sharp too. You can't jack the leverage the way that you can with, 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 with straight trend though. So it, 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 it's not a slam dunk, but the next system that we have to add is cross-sectional carry. And cross-sectional carry is very, very different. And that's what we want because you'll notice that if that here, this one, it's better than what we've got now, but it's really just like a smooth, pussified version of what we've got now. I actually prefer this, even though this one is smoother and easier to live with, because this one lets you rock out with your cock out. But this one, this is very different. It's totally different. Of course, it has periods of going sideways. All trading systems have long periods of going sideways. Anyone who tells you that's different is just straight up lying to you. Warren Buffett had a 15-year drawdown. You're telling me Warren Buffett sucked? No, he didn't. He's real good. But his system went sideways for 15... His system went down for 15 years. So... Carry gets to sharp 1.7, but it's so different, and that gives us a lot of, uh, of value. Now, when we mix these, 33, 33, 33, this is what we get with very conservative cost estimates, higher costs than what we're actually getting in the real world now. We get to sharp 2.01. This is a smooth and user-friendly equity curve everyone can live with. I could live with this. I think everyone can live with this. Um, the longer-term results look even better. And if you aren't fluent in nerd, a sharp of 2.01, as good as the best ever to do it. Small drawdowns, high-risk adjusted returns over 100% per year, much better than that in a great year, but a, but profitable every year. I've already shown you how it works, but it's about creating generational wealth from crypto. So if you do 100% per year and you start with 10 grand, after five years, you've got 320 grand, but then it kicks in and the real magic starts. After 10 years, you hear it, 10 million bucks. And, you know, I've done it for 15 years and at a, at not at 100%, at way lower than that, and, and I'm only 10 million bucks. So our strategy has done on average 107% per year. So you can see that once you stick with it for a while, you get to 380 grand starting with 10, but then you've got confidence, and then you can see that just a, the few next bends in the road, at the end of it, you've got a $14 million retirement fortune. You can hold out. So what you really want to do, my advice, my best advice, check it as little as possible. Just relax and enjoy your while, enjoy the ride. Know that if you can keep your hands off the steering wheel, it's going to make you rich in five to 10 years. It's not a get rich quick scheme. These silly meme coins and alt season, those are get rich quick schemes. If we get an alt season, all of those are going to make you rich in three to six months. If we don't, you're going to get fucked on those altcoins and especially the memes. Nothing for nothing. There's very few free lunches. But this, this is a certain part. This takes the risk out of it. It takes the skill out of it. It takes the work out of it too. If you can just not mess with it, if you can not worry about the day-to-day, -day, you can be highly confident at the end of the year you'll show a profit. Now, it's, it works a little bit different in bear phases. In bear phases, it goes long sideways periods and then shoots up fast. In bull phases, it's it's slower and steady with shorter sideways periods. So my goal for you is the same as my goal for myself. It's the same goal as I, 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 I think I'm on track to get there by the end of next year. The ability to do whatever I want, wherever I want, with whoever I want for as long as I want, and money is just a tool to buy time and freedom. And, and most people use their time. Most people go to work and use their time to buy money. I want you to do the opposite. I want to use your money to buy back your time and be free. For me, my measure of success isn't how much money I, I'm, I'm worth, 
because I already make more than I can spend, right? Like I live in Thailand, you can't possibly spend more than a hundred grand a year here. And I live like an absolute king and, and I've got, you know, hot and cold running servants and I do anything I want and I eat wherever I want. And like couldn't possibly spend any more money. So what I really want is to have a life where no one in this whole fucking world tells me what to do or tells me I have to be a certain place at a certain time. That's what I want. That's what I want for you too. You should be impressed so far. It's pretty cool. It's great. Because this has been life-changing for me and my family. It's my wife, gorgeous. It's my, uh, I call her my little norm. She's uh She's the apple of my eye. Until Bitcoin touches 70,000, and where are we now? We are currently at 60,000. Until it touches 70,000. You join this thing, I'll give you $500 in USD Tether, and I'll, uh, and I'll, and I'll put it right in your FinRev account. Get it right to earning money, right to automated trading, to get you up and running fast. Um, this is my wife. She must be, she must have poor eyesight. So here's the deal. We have three tiers of FinRev available for you today. FinRev Silver, some of you already have it. It's a thousand bucks for three years. You have to execute the trades yourself. It's pretty good. It's not as good as the automated system, but but for a simplified system, it's about 70%. FinRev Gold is the system that I have my personal money in. It's everything that I've demoed you today. It's the one that I personally like it the best because you can run it safely at degenerate leverage. It's 6,500 for three years of fully automated trend following trading. Why three years? Well, because you really need to give it some time. You can't be saying, oh, I, I went down this month, therefore it didn't work for me. Therefore, it's it's not like that. It, the, I, I want to tell you the truth and, I show, and I've shown you my real results and you know, I've made multiple, multiple, multiple millions of dollars doing this, but the results are, are highly unpredictable and they come in short spurts. FinRev Platinum is 9,500 for three years of fully automated trading. With all of our systems, the, the blend of trend momentum carry that I've demoed you, plus the ability to run multiple accounts. So what this lets you do is, let's say you want to run a trend account at a DGEN leverage at, at, and target 20x gains in a year, which you can do, which people have done. I wouldn't let you do that with carry and and cross-sectional momentum, but you can run this account on trend. You could have your main account on the steady, smooth progress. You can split it up between multiple exchanges if you're worried that Binance might go broke or, or you know, the smart thing is to split it up between exchanges. What do you get exactly? You get three years of automated algorithmic trading. With FinRev, you get a VIP onboarding with one of our expert crypto trader coaches, um, a guy like Ian, a guy like Maurizio, a guy like Paul Candian, or, 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 or our other coach, Paul. Guys who've got their own money in FinRev, guys who've used it for years. Almost everyone in our company uses FinRev, by the way. Um, almost everyone's got their own cash stashed in it. You know, we won't send you to some customer service person who doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. You get a, all the comprehensive statistics and monitoring that I've showed you today. You deserve that. You can delay starting or pausing at any time. Let's say you think that Retardio is about to moon or some other unknown meme coin. You want to pause. You want to throw your stack in that, roll the dice, 10 exit, pull it back out, shove it back into FinRef. I totally support that level of irresponsible gambling. You can do that. You double your money guarantee. If you aren't in profit for the first 12 months using the system, we'll let you use it for free until you've doubled your money. Um, the $500 to get started with, that expires when Bitcoin hits its $70,000. So get that call booked, finrev.trade forward slash call. Finrev Platinum is the same thing, the same three years of automated trading. Now, what happens at the end of the three years? Do I hit you up for another 9500 bucks? Fuck no. If you'd like to continue when that's over, I'm going to charge you 20% of the profits that we make together. And I think that's fair. After that, if you don't make any money, I don't deserve to make any money. 
you get the same VIP onboarding, the same stats and monitoring. You're grandfathered into new systems, and our system is completely custom designed for your goals. If you're a little bit behind the eight ball for where you need to be to reach your retirement goals, we might dial it up a bit for you. We might crank it so that you're earning more than 100% a year. If you're already on a glide path to getting everything you want and you're winning the game, we might dial it back and make it and make it steady, safe, and smooth at 50% a year. It's up to you, and we've got a bunch of training that we equip you to make those decisions because, as usual in finance, the decisions aren't necessarily like take more risk, make more money. Taking more risk is unsurprisingly risky. You can delay starting or pausing any time for any of your accounts. You get all of our trend-following cross-sectional carry and cross-sectional momentum system for smooth and fast returns. The same double your money guarantee. If you aren't in profit after your first 12 months, you can use it until you've doubled your money. You also get 500 bucks to start trading. Um, if you need a payment plan, a shorter commitment, longer commitment, we got options. Book in, discuss it with the enrollment stuff. It's not some high pressure sales call. It's it's a nerdier version of me trying to work out what's best for you. You know, and if this is not right for you, if you're starting with a thousand bucks, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be gambling on some meme coins, trying to turn that into a big stack and getting this up. So if you're an existing customer, you want to upgrade, you can just pay the difference, obviously. Um yeah. Questions. All right. Settle Morik, yeah, you get the five hundred bucks, my man. Ian. Nice. What a presentation, man. That was really great. So we'll just let the questions uh let the questions build up then. So you'd never, you'd never know I was just a guy in my pajama pants. Oh, I'm not oh. gonna start. Oh. Oh. oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, no. <laughs> you'd just... never recover. You'd never oh. recover. My oh. butthole has, my butthole has seen plenty of these webinars. Oh. That would have that would have been seared on my brain. I, I'd be in therapy for the rest of my life. Oh. Can't unsee my butthole. Oh, oh dear. You can cancel your subscription, but you cannot unsee my butthole. <laughs> I barely know how to compose myself after that. But uh so let's just go back to FinRev Silver then. So uh FinRev Silver is a really great option if you've got like yeah. a tiny nut, you know, if you've got sort of 500 bucks or a thousand bucks and that's it. The FinRev Silver, it really is fantastic. And it's designed so that you just you just open it up and you do it once a day. And then that's it. You go away. You enjoy your life. You come back the next day at the same time and and you do it. So the offer for the 500, the, the offer that stops at 70K is the 500 bucks. So like the prices that you saw on the screen for gold and silver, uh, sorry, for gold and platinum, they're they're correct okay they don't change or end at 70k it's it's just that 500 bucks so on that note joe's just going what if you were to go to platinum and put the 500 bonus offer into high vol account and we hit the bull run would that be a reason yeah totally. I mean, if you if you uh, hold, hold on here let me uh um let me show you so if if you were to use platinum Platinum is a high sharp, high risk adjusted system, but it's not necessarily what you would want to do if you wanted to run it at a hundred volt. Um, let me let me let me load up a uh, let me load up a hundred volt account, and then and then I'll show you, and then I'll show you. Uh, why? So this guy, do, 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 do. okay, I'm going to share screen again, right?
So this guy started off with 200 bucks. He put in, he put in another four grand uh, somewhere around, somewhere around here. But, but, but this was really, let me zoom in so you can see. So this was really a $200 account that he's running at a hundred volt. It was, it dropped to 187, 180, 200, 200, 200. You can see this is 200, 200. 250. And then we got the bull phase in mid-October. So, so by November, he doubled his account. And then it started to go nuts. November. Whoa, motherfucker. By the end of November, he's at five grand from 200 bucks. Then he's at nine grand. Now you don't get anything for for anything. He's going up and up and up from two hundred bucks to eighteen grand, and then he dropped to twelve grand in a day, and then made it back three days later. He's having a wild ride, this boy. But then went down as low as ten grand. So where? He put in he put in some more somewhere around here, I think. Um, so he went from t ten grand to twenty, and then lost half of it. Include and put in four more. So he's put he's put in four grand to make eleven. But at one stage, he put in two hundred bucks, and he'd made twenty one grand. He'd made a hundred X on his account. So the devil deal with going at super high at super high volatility targets is if we get a bull run, you can hundred X an account. If we don't get a bull run, well, you get some problems. And you're going to lose half your money. Um, so if you were running, if you wanted to run a high leverage account, I would personally run it just on trend because the point of the, the advantage of trend, there's a bunch of technical reasons why positive skew trading systems can be traded at higher volatility targets. I, I won't go into them because I'll bore you and I'll, I'll go nuts and, and Ian will hate me. But um, pure trend is more suitable to trade at 90 or 100 volt than, than a blend of, of other things. If you want to be sensible, be really sensible. If, if you want to be a gambler, well, you get you, you can't you can't get both. You can't use you can't be gambling and have a steady and smooth equity curve. Like like to think that you can is like like grow the fuck up kind of thing. All right. The uh, the volatility setting is the annualized average amount that your account wiggles every day. So. Um. Oh shit! I'm going to get maths nerdy again. Um, take the daily average standard deviation of your account and multiply it by 19, which is the square root of the number of trading days in a year, and and you will get an annualized volatility target. If that's the normal amount of wiggle that you want in your account every day, if you're comfortable with five percent normal wiggle in your account every day. Like a normal day, your account goes up or down five percent, and then a one in a hundred day, it goes it goes up or down fifteen or twenty percent. That would work out to an annualized volatility target of five times nineteen is roughly a bit under one hundred percent. Um, this is a really good question. Hi Scott, at a ninety or one hundred percent volatility, will your account liquidate? Let me just the math on that is. Optimal sharp ratio, optimal volatility target equals your sharp ratio squared divided by two. So if our sharp ratio is so far it's been 1.7, let's be super conservative and say that it's 1.5. One point five times one point five is
divided by two is 1.12, which is 112% volatility. That's the peak of the optimal wealth creation curve. So to be safe, you should generally half that. So about, uh, you, you should be about half that if you're sensible. Um, if you trade past high vol past optimal volatility, what it looks like is this. Uh, um, we're not seeing your screen at the moment. Do I, you um, want to I'm, just gonna share I'm just going to share it. Okay. Okay, this is how the Kelly criterion works. Most sensible traders don't go much past half Kelly. That's like sensible. So as our, this is our long-term expected return. This is our volatility target. If your volatility target goes past the peak of the curve, the peak of the curve is your sharp ratio squared divided by two. Then, in the long run, you will earn less money. But in the short run, you might earn more. So in the short run, our system can perform at a sharp ratio of three. If you get at a period where our where our system performs at a sharp ratio of three, you get three squared is, is nine divided by two is 450% volatility target is, is optimal. So you can run at 450% in 1,000x your account if we get a good period. If we get, if you go past this curve, it becomes suboptimal and you have to be lucky to win. You can get lucky and win like it's crypto. That's how people win. They get lucky. If you go too far, if you go past here, your expected return firstly becomes zero and then becomes negative. So that's how the maths work. In, in, a, practical, in a practical sense, if you want to gamble, at thousand, so altcoins are between two hundred and two thousand volatility. So if you hold an if you hold a portfolio of tiny cap altcoins, you're running a two thousand vol portfolio. If you've done that, you probably know that you've experienced eighty or ninety percent drawdowns. If you run Finrev at eighty or ninety percent vol, you're going to experience eight. If if you run Finrev at at two hundred vol, you're going to experience eighty or ninety percent drawdowns. If you run FinRev at 100 vol, it's better than mean coins risk adjusted. So you, you're probably going to experience 50% drawdowns. Sure. So let's, let's talk. And about it won't that. liquidate to answer your question simply. Sorry, I answered your question in a totally inappropriately nerdy way. <laughs> yeah, I'll try and I'll try and frame the next question in a way that we we keep away. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a, he, he, Ian's supposed to be my tra my nerd translator, but but. <laughs> Okay, then. So I'm going to group a bunch of things um, together for us to discuss, but I think they're going to be around around drawdowns. So there's one question that's asking about, can I try the system and see what happens for free, which I kind of interpret as I'm looking for some short term results. So I think we should talk about trend being long term. And then I think we should talk about the drawdowns as well. I think in that DGEN account, I think the account was something like up at 21 and then it lost $10,000 in a day. So with these can I, DGEN can accounts, I, can, can you I show handle you, that? I show you some, account, some accounts. Let me, show, let me show you some real results. So just kind of for, yeah, for the normal results, like, for my long-term FinRev account, I don't want violent swings like that. I just want a nice, smooth ride, which is completely different from my DGEN account, hence why these things uh, okay, exist. So, so this is buy bid at 35, 40, 45, and 50. 50 makes the most money, but it also has the biggest swing. So at its peak, 50 was at... This is the last 12 months, by the way. So at its peak, 50 vol made... 120%, and where is it today? It's at 62%. I reckon we'll get I reckon we'll get back above here before the end of the year. But but over the last 12 months, that's what that's what 50 volt looks. 35 volt.
he didn't have, oh, actually um we stopped trading 35 vol on 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 uh, on buy bit but but 40 vol you made less but you made less in the good times you only got up to 93 but you got fucked less too so this is what the raw returns look like each day and you can see that on the big days the big days that you do really well and the big days that you get fucked you get fucked more on actually no that no, 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 no yeah yeah actually that is that is right that's true yeah on the big on the days that you get fucked and let's look at the daily swings what were the biggest daily swings the big daily the biggest daily swing we had here which is not a big deal because we were because it only lasted for two days before we recovered was 15 percent so at 50 vol you might have a 15 percent down day once a year and then we had an 11 percent up day the next day um as usual all of our shit is like you know mm, it's not it, it's not uh, uh, I'm not trying to hide results. I'm not trying to pretend that it makes money every single day. It's a real thing. Um, freedom, do the higher volatilities ever make money long make less money long term? If we get an exchange a sustained period of drawdown, let me show you. Let's look at the last 90 days where we've been in drawdown. They experience what's called volatility drag. So over the last 90 days, ignore the ignore the blue one. We're not trading that anymore. You can see that. 50 has gotten fucked harder than, than that. So there's two ways that high vol can make less money in the long term. The first way is that I've over is if I've overestimated the sharp ratio and we've gone past sharp ratio squared divided by two as a volatility target. That's one way. The second way is if that we experience a sustained period of drawdown. In any drawdown, a higher volatility target means bigger positions. If you're losing money, you lose more when you've got bigger positions. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really great. So we've taken up uh, an hour and 45 of people's time. So I think perhaps just to round off with a small bit of admin then, so if you click on the link, that will take you uh, through to a, a, a short questionnaire. And then you book your time with your enrollment director. They can answer all of your questions one on one. After that, you would be with one of our onboarding coaches. And like Scott said, this is somebody that uses the system, you know. Um, so you go through that. Then we've also got a FinRev group that you'll be in. And we have uh, quarterly Ask Me Anything, which is a direct with Scott and the development team where you can just go, hey, what's this? Help me. So that's that's all there for you. And there's always regular updates about um, FinRev. So once you're on board with this, like Scott said, all the information is out there. We're talking about it. So we just can't wait to have you on the... Okay, one you know, last question that's really good. Are the funds locked in at any time? No, never locked. You, can, you don't need to ask our permission or email support to get your money back. You just log into your Binance, your Bybit, your whatever account and withdraw the money. It comes out. You're five seconds away from withdrawing and you don't need any permission from us to do it. It's not our money. We never have custody of it. We just use an API key to get your positions, your permission to trade on your behalf. So you want to withdraw your money, you just pull it out. The system adjusts. So you got it. So the way it works, you got 100 grand in the account. You decide you pull out 50. The next day, the system just goes, oh, well, we've got 50 grand. We better adjust positions. And it builds you a new perfect portfolio for 50 grand. You add 50 grand in. Now you've got 150. You don't need to tell us. You don't need to ask permission. The system just goes, oh, wow, he's trading with 150 grand now. Let's build him a perfect 150 grand portfolio. That's how it works. No, you never yeah, want to yeah. trust anyone in crypto with your money. Never. Never. Exactly. For and all lives. Thanks for, for all of this as well. So anything that you want to do with FinRev, we've got a knowledge base that shows you step by step, photograph by photograph. This is how you withdraw. This is and someone's gonna walk you through it like you're five. Like like my my boomer father, he's like the boomeriest boomer you could he, he, 
You know, he's an Australian boomer who owns property and he's an ex-surgeon and his number one his his number one fear in life is African gangs in Australia and watches Sky News and like he's like the boomeriest boomer in the boomer world and he can do it. So if he can do it and he's 78 years old, you guys can do it too. Absolutely. All right, guys, let's kill it.